Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And welcome to Cats and Dogs here on Press TV with me, Len Topic, where we begin with a look at a right royal eviction. Homelessness is a big problem, but who'd have thought it could actually affect royalty, or former royalty, to be precise. Yes, the man who won't be king, that's Harry, and his owner, Meghan, <laughs> have been asked to leave their UK royal abode, Frogmore Cottage. The couple who junked their royal duties back in 2020 have basically been evicted. Now, Frogmore was a gift from the late Queen, and it meant to remain Harry and Meghan's home here in the UK. But they were reportedly told to leave by Buckingham Palace in January after Harry published his explosive memoir, Spare. And that's hardly surprising, is it? <laughs> Basically, it's like writing a book which might as well be entitled Why I Hate My Landlord. <laughs> and how did he think the landlord would respond? Well, you really do have to leave. Uh, well, one kindly request, though, that you don't let Megan take all the light bulbs. <laughs> now, if you haven't read Spare, here's a short summary. Once upon a time in England, there was a prince called Harry. His mum was Diana. He says the family were mean to her. Then she died. Then he says the family was even meaner to him and his wife. Now, some say his wife is a moaner. And he's sorry he wore a Nazi uniform. Then they left and lived unhappily ever after. The end. And that's it. <laughs> Apparently, Harry also begged his dad not to marry Camilla, now Queen Consort. But is Prince Harry the victim of his uh, wicked stepmother? Now, in truth, I doubt the eviction is personal. And it probably has absolutely nothing to do with these attacks on the royal family. Maybe they just need the property for storage. <laughs> Let's hope the unhappy couple do get over it soon, though. After all, they already said they felt only shame whilst being a part of the royal family. And perhaps that feeling was mutual, but I digress. <laughs> so where will the couple stay when in the UK visiting king and queen consort? Will they join the 271,000 homeless people in the UK in the streets near Buckingham Palace? <laughs> Poor Harry and Meghan, though. Moving to the other side of the planet, working all hours writing anti-daddy books and appearing on Netflix films just to get by. <laughs> Actually, the more I think about it, the sorrier I feel for them. Currently, they're living in a teeny weeny little mansion in Montecito. And worst of all, perhaps all this suffering is happening because no one in Britain seems to give a hoot about H&M anymore. <laughs> this cruelty must stop now. But what will happen when the paperback book is out with the extra chapters? What will they have to vacate next? Uh? <laughs> For naked one came into this world and naked one will leave. <laughs> This cancel culture really does have to come to an end, though. It's against freedom of speech, and for Meghan particularly, freedom of screech. <laughs> now, rumour has it Prince Andrew, who has been stripped of his royal titles, has been offered the keys to the ten-bedroom home, which, when you think about it, mathematically speaking, might increase the risk of new saucy scandals by a factor of ten. <laughs> now, sources adamantly deny, as a cruel joke, that Andrew plans to change the name of the place from Frogmore to Snogmore. But I'll leave that for you to decide. But maybe the entire eviction story isn't about H&M at all, but about the high cost of living in the UK. Uh, look, dear son, one must accept that you really do need to leave England. I mean, look at the cost of living. Everybody needs to leave. <laughs> Now, take childcare. Even in the US, parents must make difficult decisions and trade-offs. Childcare now costs over $10,000 per year on average, and even more in the UK. So perhaps it's for the best that Harry can supplement these high costs with a bit of work here, a bit of work there, and if that means denigrating the whole of the royal family, what choice have they got? <laughs> Actually, Zelensky's the same in a way. Like a son, he wants old father Biden to give him more and more and more. <laughs> Just one week after a surprise visit by President Biden, Treasury Secretary Janet L. Yellen went to Kiev to visit him, presumably to give Mr. Zelensky his own set of keys to the US Treasury. <laughs> After all, he can't wait for billions of taxpayer dollars to get there, so he might as well just have the keys, and it saves a lot of time. Hey, Yolodos, just go in and take whatever you... What if the Treasury does run out of dollars? What then? Well, let's ask the man who knows. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, on the Cats and Dogs phone line, the Ukrainian president himself, Vladimir Zelensky. Mr. President, can the Americans afford to pay for your war right up to the end? I know that Biden does say he'll do for Ukraine what he's done for America. 
That's what I'm afraid of. Afraid of? What do you mean? If you look at the price of eggs in the U.S., they're smuggling eggs in from Mexico. At least we can afford eggs in Ukraine. But he bought you half a billion in person for the anniversary of the war. Yes, but that's half a billion dollars, not eggs. Look, leaving the eggs thing aside for a moment, isn't that quite a lot of money? But Biden forgot to bring new hockey t-shirts. T-shirts? What's that got to do with it? I needed them for my next photo shoot. Can't you fight and win without him? Sure I can. I can fight even better without Biden. Without Biden? Why is that? Because if Trump wins, he's such good friends with Putin. They'll probably both give me money. Meanwhile, Europe faces a growing water crisis as a winter drought worsens. Hey, what is this wall doing here? It's not a wall, it's a dam. Where's all the water gone? I blame Putin. Lac de Montbel, for example, a major reservoir and boating lake in the French Pyrenees, is more than 80% empty due to exceptionally low winter rain and snowfall. Mesdames et Messieurs, we have exceeded our flood reduction targets by over 80%. What is your next climate target? More rainfall. <laughs> now, some say global warming is better than global cooling, when you haven't got any Russian gas, that is. But it may also land you in problems during a dry, hot summer. In northern Italy, for example, tourists can walk to the small island of San Biagio, normally reached only by boat, from the shore of Lake Garda, where the water is 70 centimetres below its average level. The Alps have had 63% less snow than usual, and in Germany, shallow waters on the Rhine have disrupted barge traffic, forcing boats heading up into Central Europe to load at half capacity. And in Catalonia, now short of water for three whole years, Barcelona has stopped watering its parks. What would be Trump's response to this? So Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and that, and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, OK? It's a hoax. Aren't they beautiful? Underwater rocks emerged from the water of Lake Garda in northern Italy after 70 years. Very beautiful. This child is so beautiful. <laughs> Have you always dreamt of crossing on the riverbed instead of an ugly bridge? This could be your lucky day. <laughs> at least the weeding won't take long, huh? Look at all that dry land, perfect for building much-needed housing in this beautiful valley. <laughs> it's so safe, so very safe. These water levels mean you don't need a boat to go fishing, and no one can drown. <laughs> That's all for this week. Join me again next time to see if there's any gain in Ukraine, any rain in Spain, and any fame left for H&M. That's all on Press TV with me, Lemon Turpic, and catch them, dogs!